Okay, here we are with our second lesson in uh, our very short unit on Einstein's theory of special relativity. So, we looked at relative motion in a previous lesson. And today, we're going to extend the notions of relative motion into the world of Einstein. So here's a little recall from our last le lesson. All motion is relative depending on your frame of reference. So here we have a truck and some observer standing on the ground. Okay, and we're going to call um, the frame of reference where the observer is standing O, so that's kind of like the stationary frame of reference. And then we're going to call the truck, and it's a flatbed truck, and we notice there's two guys playing baseball, or two gals playing baseball on the back of the truck, and we're going to call that O prime. And so a lot of stuff is going on here. In the truck's frame of reference, which is O prime, the pitcher and the catcher would both agree on the speed of the baseball. They're throwing a baseball back and forth, and they would say, oh yeah, the pitcher's throwing the baseball at 50 kilometers an hour. But the observer on the ground watching this, well, he's seeing the pitcher throw the baseball on a moving truck. So he might say, no, 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 you're not, you know, you're not throwing the baseball at 50 kilometers an hour. You're throwing the, the baseball at 50 kilometers an hour plus how fast the truck is going. And instead of saying, okay, this is an observer, what if the observer actually had a radar gun? That radar gun, if you measured the speed of the baseball, would say something very different. Because a radar gun is just a speed measuring device and it's not intuitive. You know, the, you know, the person on the ground, you could make the argument, would say, well, yeah, but he knows that the guys are on a truck and he knows that. But that's not the point. The point is, is that to an observer on the ground, according to the ground, how fast is that baseball moving? Well, it's moving with a speed that the pitcher's throwing it, plus the speed that the truck is moving at. And so this is kind of one of those, you know, yet another example of how velocities, when they're measured in two different reference frames, might not agree with each other. So let's go on to see what Einstein said about all of this, because this is still within the realm of this kind of classical notion of relativity, because we haven't talked about anything moving really, really fast yet. <clears throat> so, in order to generate Einstein's first postulate of special relativity, we need to look at two different types of reference frames. Okay, an inertial reference frame, these are frames of reference that are in a state of constant motion with respect to one another. And what that means is, is that they're reference frames that are not accelerating with respect to one another. Okay, so in our example of the flatbed truck and the guys playing baseball on it and the dude on the ground who's watching, we would say that as those reference frames, the truck and the ground, are inertial reference frames as long as that truck's not accelerating. A non-inertial reference frame, then, are frames of reference that accelerate with respect to one another. Okay, so in thinking about these two different types of reference frames, Einstein proposed his first theory, and it's called the principle of relativity. And it's that the laws of physics must be the same in all inertial reference frames. Okay, so the laws of physics has to hold for those guys in the truck, and it has to hold for the guy on the ground. And everything at the end has to add up, and everything's got to agree. So let's take a look at an example of this. A physics student, Alphonse, is sitting at a dinner table, and his six kilogram turkey suddenly explodes into two equal pieces. One of those pieces moves two meters per second left, while the other moves two meters per second right. Another student, Beauregard, walks by the table, moving at two meters per second left. Let's determine the change in kinetic energy of the turkey 
from the perspective of Alphonse and from the perspective of Beauregard. Because Einstein's first postulate says that the laws of physics has to be the same in both these reference frames. So we're going to look at the reference frame of Alphonse, who's sitting, and the reference frame of Beauregard, who's walking. These are two different inertial reference frames. So here's a little diagram of what's going on. Again, there's Alphonse sitting at the table, and there's Beauregard walking by. Okay. So <clears throat> this right here would, of course, be Alphonse's point of view. This is his viewpoint. This is his frame of reference. Beauregard's frame of reference, though, in his frame of reference, well, he's not really walking. He sees everything else moving by him. And so Alphonse and the table and the ground and everything is going to the right at 2 meters per second, which means that that first piece of turkey, which was moving 2 meters per second left, is actually now moving at the same speed as Beauregard, who's walking by. So he sees that first piece of turkey not moving at all, because he's moving at the same speed as it, as it is. It's, it's going at the same speed. And, of course, that would be Beauregard's point of view. So now let's continue this. Here's our two diagrams. We're going to continue this in an example. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the math now. So just recall from grade 11 physics that kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. And we need to look at, we want to look at the change in kinetic energy of the, P, of the turkey from both viewpoints. So in Alphonse's stationary reference frame, we know that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And the initial kinetic energy of that turkey is, of course, zero. So the initial kinetic energy is just zero. So what we have then is we've got one half times the mass of the first half of turkey times its velocity squared plus one half times the mass of the second piece of turkey times its velocity squared minus zero, which is the initial kinetic energy of the turkey, because initially it was just sitting there. And if we sub these numbers in, of course, a six kilogram turkey, half of it's going to weigh three kilograms. And the first piece was moving two meters per second. Second piece was moving two meters per second. And so we're going to get an idea. The change in kinetic energy is 12 joules. Okay, so that's from the stationary reference frame. Let's talk about now Beauregard's moving reference frame, because he's moving here. And so we have the same initial formula. The change in kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy of the piece of turkey at the end minus the kinetic energy of the piece of turkey at the beginning. And so what we should say here is, okay, well, that's, again, the same thing, 1 half m1v1 squared plus 1 half m2v2 squared. But remember, at the very beginning, Beauregard was moving. So that so according to him, that piece of turkey wasn't stationary, was it? That piece of turkey at the beginning, it was stationary to the one guy, Alphonse, but it was not stationary to Beauregard. Beauregard saw it moving backwards. So we can sub in numbers here. And because the first piece of turkey shoots off 2 meters per second to the left, but that's also what Beauregard's moving, he doesn't see it moving. So to him, it's stationary. The second piece of turkey that shoots off in the other direction, well, if he's moving left at 2 meters per second and it's moving right at 2 meters per second, he sees it moving 4 meters per second to the right. And of course, then the initial piece of turkey, or the initial turkey when it was together, he saw it moving at 2 meters per second. So if we take these numbers and add them up, Einstein says that these two things had better be the same. We had better agree, because this is one of the laws of physics. And of course, when we do, we get 24 minus 12, which is a change of 12 joules. And so what we would say here is that, yes, both Alphonse and Beauregard agree on the change in kinetic energy. Right? And we could go through this and we could do the same thing for other simple um, physics laws. We could do this for momentum. 
But we haven't learned momentum yet. We're going to learn that later on in the course. So we could do this for many other things. And we would see that the laws of physics have to agree. What makes this postulate so bold, though, is that it says that all the laws of physics, so we're talking mechanics, optics, electricity and magnetism, thermodynamics, everything is the same in all reference frames that have a constant velocity relative to one another. And that's what's so neat about this first postulate. The second postulate is kind of based on the speed of light. So let's take a step back. Remember that in grade 11 we learned that sound is a wave and it travels at different velocities depending on the medium. Right? We saw evidence of the Doppler effect and that sound changes depending on certain conditions. So one of the units in grade 12 is all about light and how light really is a is very unique subject to study. So it's got, part of, it's got properties of both particles and waves. And light's different in, light is very different than sound in many ways. And there was a few revolutionary experiments that taught us that light doesn't need a medium to propagate through. Light can travel through a vacuum. And so it was based on that finding and the first postulate that all the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames that Einstein developed his second postulate of special relativity and that's the constancy of the speed of light and that's that the speed of light in a vacuum has the same value in all inertial reference frames regardless of the velocity of the observer or the source emitting the light so it doesn't matter if you're in a spaceship and you're traveling super super fast and you shine a light a beam you know you shine a, a beam of light out the front of your spaceship even though you're traveling super super fast that beam of light is still traveling at the speed of light it's the same as if you're traveling slow not traveling at all or fast that speed of light is exactly the same and that was his second postulate and that's where we'll wrap up today